Hi, my name is Troy from Extract Craft. Today I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about Buckner filtration. These guys have been around a long time because they're very reliable. The reason people like them is because they're fast, you can use different filter papers for different filtering needs, and it's high quality. As you can see, they come in different sizes. You can match the 5 liter capacity of this big guy with the Ito Pro, or you can use a 1 liter or 500 milliliter for the Source Turbo. They look the same because they're all made of the same simple components. Filter papers come in different grades and speeds. We typically use fast, medium, and slow. They come in packs like this of 100, and on them you'll see basically the size and diameter. You'll see the speed, and usually the indication for the micron size. What a micron is, is one millionth of a meter, so we're talking about something very small. The holes in this, this is a slow filter, are around three micron. So very, very small holes that will restrict the ability for particles to flow through them. So like I said, slow is about 3 micron, medium around 12, and fast around 20, which is very similar to what a coffee filter would be. So the slow we use for very fine filtering, medium for things like winterization, and fast for something that you need to just rough filter very quickly. You don't need to buy all three. Instead of buying a medium, you can just use two fast filters together to basically get the same result. So for the slow, we got to be very careful because they clog easily. So in order to get good results with the slow, it's better to use pretty good separation and rough filtering before you move to the slow. So now that we know all the components, let's take a look at the different vacuum sources. When you're considering what type of vacuum source to use, there are quite a few types and sizes available. There's two main things to consider when you're making this decision. First, remember we're working with very flammable ethanol and it creates very flammable vapor. So you wanna make sure that the vacuum source is rated for flammable solvents. And then secondly, you need to consider basically how much air volume you're gonna be moving in order to seat that paper filter that's gonna sit inside the funnel. For something small like this, a one liter, uh, small pumps like using the Source Turbo, it's perfectly adequate. When you're dealing with more volume like that five liter, you gotta move into something that has a deeper draw to seat that filter. So you're gonna move into something like a diaphragm pump or a rotary vein pump. In talking about filtering the larger volumes, especially with that 5 liter Buckner that you've got to move a lot of air and need better vacuum source capabilities, people ask me, hey Troy, why don't you put a vacuum port or a filtration equipment right on the Eto Pro? It's not that we didn't think about it, we just figured it was not a good idea. Number one, the pumps 
for this are not made nor big enough to move that amount, that amount of air volume quickly. And then also, why would we ever want to filter into our loading vessel? If you do, and you've got to refilter, you've got to empty it, the particulates from the first are already in your loading vessel. If you've got to do it again, you can't see what's actually happening in here. So neither using a vacuum port from this nor putting filtration on it, in our opinion, is a good idea. Once you're dealing with this type of volume, it's better to use a proper vacuum source and proper filtration equipment. So now that we've covered the Buckners themselves and the vacuum sources, let's take a look at the whole process in action. Now we're ready to run an example and show you actually how the system works. And we're going to do it using the source turbo, a one liter Buckner, and also a roughly filtered lavender tincture that I've prepared. So first I'm going to plug the machine in. It's going to start. Now to use it as a vacuum port, we have to disassemble it because the vacuum port's on the base. So now that we've got all the pieces off, there's a little plastic nipple right here on the base. That's the vacuum port. So what we do is we're going to take this piece here, and this is what comes with the Buckner set uh, that we sell. Otherwise, you can buy the proper size. This is a 1 8 inch inner diameter tube that fits right in the vacuum port. The other end goes right on the Buckner. And then we're going to check to make sure that the vacuum screw here is closed all the way. Actually, let me show you one thing. Some people sometimes are wondering why the vacuum pump shuts off during the process. If the funnel gets clogged with a lot of small particles, the base here will come under basically full vacuum that this machine is programmed for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to simulate full vacuum just by plugging this hole and you'll hear the machine kick on and off when I either release or apply my thumb. So that simulates full vacuum. Let go, the pumps will come back on. Full vacuum, they go off. pretty easy to understand. One word of caution is if it does kick off for any amount of time, this heat post will begin to heat up and you've got to kind of be careful with that. Because if somebody touches it, they could get burned or you can melt tubes that are in contact. So let's go ahead and hook the Buckner back up. Then we're going to take our filter paper. We're going to place it in here. And this is, a, this is a very important part. Before you apply the vacuum, put some ethanol on that filter so it can wet and get seeded and, and form that really good vacuum. So now what I'm going to do, it's going to be hard to hear once the pumps start going, but I'm going to take this lavender tincture that I've prepared. Very nice. I'm going to pour it in here. And as the pumps are going, it's going to suck it down and it's going to be much nicer and clearer once it's done. That's where it picked up. So this is under full vacuum as far as this is concerned. So the vacuum shuts off and just allows the negative pressure in here, or negative vacuum in here that's built, just to continue sucking on the bottom of here. Perfectly normal, perfectly good.
You can hear the heat relay kicking on and off, which means this post is beginning to heat. So that's where you want to start just being cautious, making sure you don't touch it too much once it's up to heat or anything that can melt is in contact with it. The reason it's moving so slow is I used a slow filter and as I'll show you when it's done, there's quite a bit of particulation that's built up on that filter. So it really slows the way it moves through. But as you can see, the results here are coming through very nice, very clear, very pretty tincture. There we go. Now we're finished. It's all finished and vacuum still so you, can, you might be able to hear it when I let this go. Did you hear that vacuum release? That's because there's quite a bit of particulation on here you can see. So as you can see in the filter we caught a lot of particulation. That's what made it go from the cloudy tincture that was in the beaker to a very clear beautiful tincture now that's ready for the ethanol recovery to make a beautiful concentrate. The process is the same whether you're using a rotary vein pump, a diaphragm pump, or the vacuum port on the source turbo. I'd like to wrap up and conclude with a few cautions and tips on uh, Buckner filtration. The first couple I have to do with the filter paper itself. I mentioned that once you put it in, wetting it with some ethanol allows for a better seal. So make sure you apply the vacuum, put the paper in, wet it, and then it'll seal nicely. Also check to make sure it fits well. Sometimes the papers can be a little bit too big or a little bit too small. They need to be large enough to cover the perforated holes that are in the funnel, but not so large that they bump up against the side and cause some kind of creasing. Somewhere halfway in between the holes in the wall is optimal. When I do my filtration, often I'll do maybe two, maybe three passes. I'll start with a rough filter, uh, like with a fast filter paper, and then move to a slow, or maybe I'll do a couple fast or a couple slow. But sometimes you want to do more than one just to get the optimal quality of your filtration. So when you're thinking about that, often it gets kind of difficult to use only one set. So I like to have two or three sets on hand. Um, if you do rough filtering, you can imagine that the particulates that go through that filter paper can either uh, get stuck here in the funnel part or they can reside later in the flask. So when you refilter what you think is clean, it's going to pick up those residual particles that are still in the equipment. So I like to move between a couple different Buckners uh, to keep things clean. And then before I use them, I always want to inspect them because if there's any type of damage from dropping or clanging around when you're cleaning, it could cause them to implode um, or break when it's under a vacuum because there's quite a bit of vacuum pull on the glass when it's being used. Then the port also is obviously glass, so it can be delicate. So make sure when you're taking this tubing on and off, you're going straight back and straight on, not giving it up and down lateral pressure because that can break. So one of the more important things, and you, you got to kind of think about how rotary vane and oil pumps work when you're using them. When they're connected to this tubing with a negative draw, if you turn the pump off while it's still drawing from in here, it can suck oil out of the pump through this tubing and into your filtration. Obviously that's not a good idea. The simple way to make sure this doesn't happen is just any time the pump is connected to the flask, leave the pump's running, leave it on. Don't turn the pump off and then let this pull the oil out of the pump. It doesn't happen instantaneously, but if you leave it off for a little while, it eventually pull it out. So it's just a very good thing to avoid. Then lastly, how do I clean these? I, this is pretty easy. I often just take for the funnel, 
because like I mentioned, there can be particles stuck up in this bottom part of the funnel. I'll, I'll block it with my hand like that, and I'll fill it up with water to the top, and then just let it gush out. That'll give it a good, a good flow to kind of pull all the particles that are stuck in there. But the problem is obviously, just like with the particle getting stuck in here, water can get stuck in here. So you're gonna have to make sure you set it both ways and give it a long time to air dry and make sure it's dry so you don't get that water contamination in your extract, which is obviously not a good thing. And then with this, I typically just use some extra ethanol, fill it up, block the hole, swish it around, make sure it's all good. I might do it a couple times. I use an extra bottle of ethanol or ISO on the side to do this. And then after I've done it quite a few times and build it up, I'll run that ethanol, clean it, and then just keep using it for cleaning. So to make sure it doesn't pool down here, I just set it like this and let it dry. So everything flows down here. You'll get some collection here. So when you pick it up, some ethanol will flow down. Just take a rag, wipe it off, let it set because you've got an air vent here as well. So that works good for me. Other people will do it other ways, but that's how I do it. So that's all I've got for you today for Buckner filtration. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you learned a lot. If you've got any other questions, you can always give us a call or hit us up on, our, on the user group, Extract Craft Users Group on Facebook. Um, give us a call, let us know. Have a good day and stay lifted, my friends.